That is not dead which can eternal lie, and with strange eons, even death may deem the terror. Hello, today we'll be playing Cultist Simulator. Bring the dawn, apparently. And uh, I've played enough of this to have a vague idea of what to do, so we've got Due to the fact that I am not starting from a fresh save, we've got three options as to what is the legacy of my previous character, and they, these are Bright Young Thing, Endowed from Birth with Wealth and Talent, A Life of Ease, Confident, and Delight stretches ahead like an amber carpet. We start out with Health and This and That, Odds and Ends. We can be an aspirant, June the 28th, once again, basically the fresh start. Or we can choose to employ ourselves with the Metropolitan Police. In which case we start uh, with a job as a police inspector and with health and reason. However, we shall not be going for either of these, and rather we shall be going for the aspirant choice. There we go. Alone in this chilly city with my useless education and my dreams. What now? Could I become something more? So, pause that for a moment, just in case. So the mechanic of the game is a card game of sorts. Just check. Uh, yeah, UI scaling is a little bit funny. But luckily you can zoom in quite well. So, game takes place upon a table upon which there is a nice card map for where you can put your cards and whatnot. So, you get these little kind of boxes, as it were, where you place your cards. In this case, we've got work and we've got menial employment. And that is literally the only thing we can do. However, had we health, reason, passion, or certain of the unseen arts, we could use those to uh, work forward. So, now we've got funds and we've got health, so unskilled labour is, is unfortunately our next, next recourse. And funds, of course, which are denoted by both the cards and, of course, down at the bottom of the UI, you can see a coin. That is, is where we can see how much money we have in our possession, and money is, of course, needed for hiring people and for certain other don't have law for that but yes money is one of the things that will burn every 60 seconds due to um, simply the time passing and you needing to feed yourself house yourself clothe yourself basic necessities so funds is something that will need to be constantly um, accrued otherwise you may find yourself ill so here we know, see we've got two funds, and we've become fatigued here, which can be a little bit of a bad thing because it does slow uh, the pace at which we can work. So we've currently got work, the passage of time, dreaming, and study. Now, work of course is used to work, time passing is just an unfortunate... Uh... Oh my, a bequest! I shall pause this. A package of peculiar papers from my correspondent executor. I must study it using either passion or reason. Well, at the moment, um... 
I think, well, first of all, we, we received quite a large uh, amount of money, which is, of course, very nice. Um, of course, uh, money and good tidings such as these may not be without their... Consequences, so we shall study. Um, well, we shall use health in study to gain vitality. Now, the way getting more cards works is also we've used. Okay, let's go over the things that we just did. Using reason to work, we have secured a, a junior position here at Glover and Glover. Now, that means that we've become a clerk. So this is, as you can see, 84.7 seconds. This ticks down when I'm paused. And that means if it ticks down and we haven't um, engaged in the occupation, if we haven't done our job, uh, we get demoted or we can get fired or many, many bad consequences may arise. And that means that we will have to, you know, do something to placate our boss in order to retain our employment. Now, this is the, the other function. Up until now, aside from dreaming a little bit earlier, but when we've played a card, for example, when we played uh, Menial Labor, that is the only card that gets to be played in that. But that is not always the case, naturally. In this situation, we're doing our job as a clerk at Glover and Glover. And if we wish to pro proceed up the ladder, we need to be extra diligent. In this case, we need to put in reason to, you know, to prove that we are diligent to put in that extra bit of effort and hopefully to, to raise up the ranks. Now, what that means is reason is currently locked in there. We cannot, well, we can take it out. Um, at this moment yes we can take it out but we shouldn't probably unless we need it absolutely certainly for something but the fact that there are these slots that need to be filled this is a magnetic slot which pulls in uh, money there are others such as this But the, 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 the fact that there is a slot that we can put into reason or health or money or whatever means that we need to find a way to accrue more health, reason, passion, more of the, the traits, more of the, the mental wealth, one could say. And I'm just going to fast forward this for a little bit. There we go, passion has been renewed. And here, we put in a health into study, so we took a we took a walk, but basically what it means is we put in a health in order to gain a vitality. Now vitality and the others that uh, are used to increase the amount of your attributes, um, as it were, are timed cards but they have quite a long time um well quite a long when it comes to the game so they last three minutes and during that time we can use two of those at first two to increase in this case our health now the more we wish to increase our health the better we wish to become uh, the more we're going to have to use them and the more it comes down to having um, external things for example um, to have a scholarship in order to gain more reason than otherwise possible I have become unwell so in this case Illness is um, sadly somewhat common and the most common way to get illness is to 
uh, be unable to pay for your means, uh, which results in, uh, well, can result, usually does result in an illness. And as it says here, if an illness cannot consume health, it will cause death. And in that case, it's of course game over. So one of the, the, the ways to win is of course to escape the frailty of body and to become immortal in that way. So for example here we can see I've now accrued a skill, Stronger Physique, so I've exercised. If I use this card with 4 vitality, which is what we got from studying health, um, we can gain more health. Now that of course means that we are going to have to um, get vitality through other means as well. We can't just rely on studying one health card four times because there simply isn't enough time um, to get that done. But there are other means of getting um, getting the the particles that you use. And of course, you can also use this as um, part of other. Other activities as well. For example, you can use the skill Stronger Physique in uh, in um, with a health to perform uh, more rigorous manual labor and make a little bit more money. Here we are. We need to pay attention to detail. There is a sudden moment. We're currently set to make two coins. Um, we can pay attention to detail work overtime and uh, hopefully that will will result in something nice but we can also now at this moment a trembling in the air Ooh. there's two things that need to be done one we are currently ailing under than uh, under an affliction now afflictions are spent health um, not exhausted but spent we can turn an affliction back into health, but that requires either medicine or a vitality card. Now, medicine is paid for with funds, naturally, and uh, vitality can be accrued, but once again, it is a very time sensitive situation, so it's important that we get on it quickly uh, lest we lose health. Now, am I a passionate individual or, or a reasonable? In this case, I'm going to use the passion because uh, there's been there's so much use for the reason in the employment, which should also be put in as soon as possible, just in case. Reason, as we can see, um, if you've dimmed reason, exhausted your health. Whatever has happened, you can use a consciousness of radiance. There is a light behind the world, a light above the mansus, a light that penetrates both glass and skin. It is present here. A second order influence apparent to the perceptive, instantly recognizable to an adept. This can be used in some rites to summon minions. And this is a lantern aspect. Now, we will get to the aspects and all that once we start our cult. So, we have, from our parcel that we studied, we've gotten temptation for power. It has occurred to me that I hold the key to power, and this card will allow you to win a power victory if you upgrade it far enough. Okay, so we need to start upgrading this. We've also uh, gained a smith secret, so this is one of the one of the practices or aspects. Well, it's aspects, but uh, so this is, um, of course, an aspect of the forge, which is tends to be a destroying one. 
Uh, in addition, we have uh, received notes on a possible collaborator and directions to Morelands. And we shall start with that, because Morelands is a shop that will be here again, work overtime. We have gained health back and we can stack the cards too high, we can stack the cards however many high, I think 10 might be the maximum stack size. Um, the only one for which you will find the maximum stack size is money. So we've explored and we've found the Moreland shop and now we have explore. Now this of course can be used to explore, for example, the city, we can search the city, or we can explore mysteries, or we can explore some hidden forgotten places. If it has to do with exploring, that is where we shall do it. We've also discovered an occult scrap. Now if we use this in our exploration, we may uh, discover a location that we can later on mount an expedition to. And it's already getting quite crowded. It is getting... Ooh. Should I dedicate myself to my purpose or focus my efforts elsewhere? Hmm. Now. If I, if I put in the Smith secret, I will dedicate myself to the pursuit of power. Nothing's going to happen from that. Or I can use health to change it to us um, to the pursuit of sensation. In this case, I am going to put in the Smith secret. And um, while the game is very kind of simplistic in its design in many ways, for example, the table, the cards. I mean, you know, there's individuality in the cards, so you can see Morland's shop, you can see books there, you can kind of glean from that that it might be a, a bookshop or some kind of um, repository of hidden knowledge. You can see here you've got the the strong arm with the with the dumbbell. But it's the the momentary and kind of when changes occur you can see the, the the face of the table change and those moments are the ones that kind of then elevate the graphical style because it's not just this because you know in all honesty if, if the game was only only this it could be very well um, a mobile game you know maybe maybe you wouldn't play it on a phone but certainly you could play it on a tablet quite easily We have explored and we have located Oriflam's auction house. Excellent. Now we shall explore the occult scrap to seek out secret places of the city. And here we've gained a fleeting memory and uh, a lot of these um, fleeting memories and other short time burn cards are used to counteract one another. Exotic cravings, what drives me? So if I have a um, level 3 aspect of shaping, of delight or of light, um, this will grab a card to fill the void and to satisfy the deeper urges that drive me. And here, moths find the light in the dark and so do I. And there we are, we have gained talk, an acquaintance. Now, here comes one of the two very important ones, and uh, this is still, we're merely scratching the surface. So, Mystique is one of the two 
ones that will lead you, uh, lead pursue, uh, pursuers to your tail. Mystique, of course, uh, may attract the attention of hunters, but it's not um, definitive proof. It's it's rumors and it's you know something that will attract the attention of uh, the law or whoever might wish you ill. But it's not enough to actually you know arrest you or anything. However, it is enough to pique an interest, so it will result in um, people having a, um, a much closer look at what you're doing. So I have now discovered a hanger-on, and uh, we can tell that this is an acquaintance, not yet a friend, not yet an enemy, and they are mortal. Being mortal, of course, a very, very hard habit to break. Here, we've dedicated ourselves to power, so we can upgrade this card further. And, and of course, here is what it tells. I must be a true initiate of the Mansus. I need to work the forge aspect to invoke the forge of days and begin the change. Now, this is a... Um, level 2 mark of shaping. I may seek immortality and power in the hour called the Forge of Days. And it's also an aspect of desire because it's my dedication. My dedication is to power. Here we have the Smith Secret, of course, which is level 2 aspect of the Forge. We shall talk to the hanger on, hopefully. Oh dear, more overtime. Okay, now we have sought out locations. We have discovered the forgotten Mithraeum. Curiosity seekers have picked over this ancient temple, but there may be a hidden door here somewhere. So, a unique. All locations are unique and may only exist once. Uh, in addition to that, it's a vault in that there is something precious hidden. It's in the capital and its location. So, the last two are not that interesting, but still possibly very good to keep on. So we've got a hanger on, who we might be able to recruit, and now we've gotten a little bit of notoriety, so that's you know, obviously, can be good, can be bad. Um, it may help attract people to my course, but it may also attract unwanted attention. Now, we're currently founding our cult because we've got our first possible disciple. So in this case, we need to choose what the founding principles are. And for that, we need a law card. Now, at the moment the only law card that I have and you can see what cards can go into the slot by clicking the slot which causes in this case the Smith secret to glow so our founding principle will be the Smith secret and that means going forward I will need a Smith secret in order to um, better myself or, or increase the um, the number of, of, of disciples to the cult. So I'm kind of locking myself onto one pedestal here. Slot, I require a health because I am, um, well, it's a destroying one, so I need to sacrifice my health in order to seal the contract. And um, then an important card, a card that can lead to a, a loss, is the Dread card. Now, Dread can be um, counteracted with Contentment, but if Dread manages to stack up, in this case, it, it's still quite fine. It's, it's, it's alright, because the Dread has no place to go. It's just sitting here burning away. But if the, if the Dread starts stacking up, then that means that my mental state is going down and I may eventually lose all hope. 
or I could descend to madness. So there are many ways in which you can lose. Um, and and those those will of course be be very familiar. Um, not too long into playing the game because it is um, one of those games that you need to play over and over and over and over again because well first of all it's a it's a roguelike card game and secondly it's built around this trial and error system where you might not know what you're doing so you need to experiment you need to kind of take the risk of the unknown in order to progress towards the unknown which makes sense because it is very much tied to the um, I would like to say to the Cthulian mythos, but basically all cults everywhere are basically the same. But now we have a nemesis. Inspector Zachary Wakefield. So he will work to suppress what I'm doing and to capture me and to bring me to justice. He is a grim hunter who, who cannot be swayed by the allure of glory, but their own despair may destroy them. He is meticulous, always succeeds at creating evidence from notoriety. Very bad. He is mortal, and he is a hunter. Now, what this the grim aspect here means is that we can take him and we can have a chat with him. And we can have a chat about dread. Now, what we do with dread is we describe the horrors of they awaiting them if they pursue us. So we're looking to kind of, to to drive their mental state down. Unfortunately, this means that for every dread that I put in here, I will receive two. So it's a very quick way for me also to go batshit bonkers or actually get um, suicidally depressed I think is the, the result however we can counteract that with um, by using money to purchase opium which again uses money so we need to work in order to support our counter so now we insert our first recruit in this case a hammer on Gonna slap the fast forward on. Um, having fast forward on uh, all the time is very tempting, especially in the beginning. But it may, unfortunately, lead to um, lead to stuff just overwhelming you. Lead to to things stacking up too quickly. So it can also be bad. So I'd recommend. Um, even in beginning for the first few rounds to keep it in normal and only when you get into a Into the grind then you can you can slap it into fast forward and you know, just keep keep an eye on um, Your funds your work and whatever you're currently working on so in, in that way it should be fine, but it can still be um, You know it has its risks I'm also going to add to my library by shopping at Morland's Then I've received an injury. This is, of course, my uh, injury from um, from the ritual, and it works on the same basic principle as the afflictions. I've also now founded the Unflinching Order, an occult society dedicated to the fire that changes and remakes. So I can use cults with the talk ver verb to recruit or promote followers and to send them out on errands to gather resources. A believer can be promoted to a disciple. A few gifted disciples can be exalted even higher to reshape us. So I've got a pawn, loyal but lacks initiative. He's a follower. He also uh, has the aspect of edge. Now, Edge is, like it says, the principle uh, of battle and struggle. So, Edge means that they might be useful, for example, in attacking um, my nemesis, trying to bring them in, trying to, to murder them, or they might be useful in um, expeditions where something um, 
can be um, encountered something spooky. So, because I spoke with Inspector Wakefield, I've got notoriety now. I've also got additional dread, which is, I don't know, possibly can be quite bad. If it manages to stack up, so we'll endeavour not to, not to stack up. I've also got a temporary headquarters where I can place people into the cupboard and what that means is if I have a occultist um, who I wish to be rid of or who I need to sacrifice for whatever reason I can put them into the cupboard and turn them into a prisoner and I am now going to discuss occult business about abducting a stranger Ooh, they will struggle though, but they may be lucky, but they will struggle. Send a minion to murder a hunter. Will probably survive, the hunter that is, and the attempt will draw attention. Mmm, that's bad. What about passion? Increases aspect of moth. What about health? Well, this increases the aspect of heart. Hmm. Yes, let, let us use that. From Morlands, we've received the Orchid Transfigurations Volume 1, a 16th century alchemical fever, fever dream attributed to Robert Flood, frequently banned for the dis disturbing allure of his illustrations. And this is in Latin. Now, certain books are in languages such as Latin, Greek, uh, Aramaic, and those languages will need to be studied uh, either under a tutor or under uh, or from books. I have dreamed of the forge and I long for the heat of her flames. It is almost time to perform the work and begin the changes, but I must have enough forge aspect. Exploration might find more. In, in this situation, we have <laughs> acquired Kerner and Gerth's Greek grammar. So this is actually, yes, this book, when studied, will teach us how to read Greek. Excellent. Now we just need something Greek to read. Oh, bloody hell. And we chuck a reason in there because everything is going horrible. And we dream of the moonlit road. We chuck a smith secret in there. And hope that that leads us somewhere. From Morland Shop we have acquired a introduction to histories. Excellent. We must also explore. Now we can work. This is the what, what is needed to progress the uh, the path of power. We need a no. So we need to enter the mansus. Enter the the other realm and pass through the stag door to become to be in the know and we also need a um, sufficient amount of the forge aspect now at the moment we only have a forge aspect too and uh, every step requires more and more of it so for now we need to find a way to enter the mansus now we've acquired the skill scholar Greek, which allows us to translate Greek texts, which is very useful. Inspector Wakefield has 
gathered tentative evidence, and evidence not only does it last quite a long time, as it says here, it lasts for 10 minutes, uh, but it also can survive the hunter. So even if the hunter dies, I can still be tried in some cases. So that that's bad. Um, from our ex exploration, we have gained glimmering, and glimmering is what is needed to use, well, is needed to gain additional passion. And here we are. So, after a few things, the, the card table is completely out of order. There's events happening left and right. There's cards here and there. And quite a lot of stuff that does need to be managed. So, in that way, it is very useful to have the, the mouse cursor as your tool instead of a... Promote a believer? Hmm. To, to at least the seventh intensity, so I need a Smith Secret Intensity 7. This is of course only an Intensity 2 in order to promote someone. Keep that in mind. Now, there we gained contentment, and it's a nice, kind of very Greek-looking um, scene, and that is used to counteract dread, so... In this case, we don't need it, but... Uh, it could be useful in... Although, let's see... So we need to dream in order to enter the mansus. Now that that's that's a fact. We need um, to dream in order to break onto the other side, into the other world. I have just realised that uh, I didn't work, so I've had difficulties at work. Demotion to junior position. Now, at the moment, I would need to have passion, but I don't because the passion is used at the moment for dreaming, so I'm going to put in um, the, the skill, a stronger physique, and health in order to make a little bit of extra dosh, which is unfortunately running low. Now, I can also use Ori Flam's action auction house to sell, for example, books that I can't read or other artifacts. There, of course, may be downsides to that, but at the same time, there's also downsides to running out of money. cannot study. Can I study this? Do I have anything that will allow me to? No, I do not. Oh, damn, damn, damn. Well, only thing is to explore, to find another secret place, and hopefully I can find somewhere where I can feasibly send my follower off to. We have located the St. Agnes Hospital. This might be a place where we can feasibly send our, our man. Now, the, the problem is, of course, um, any, any expedition requires funds. And I am running very, very low on funds, so that is, is less than good.
so I can either give funds, and funds are necessary in order to bypass obstacles, or I can send additional minions, you know, for example, in this situation, I will be afflicted by the Dry Soul Curse. We need a heart or a lantern to suppress the curse. Now, I don't have anyone who um, has the heart or the lantern principle, so um, curse it's gonna be. We could maybe send them an additional money. I'm not gonna though. So yes, we a curse will unfortunately strike. And oh no, oh no. Someday soon the curse will tighten around us. Dormant dry soul curse. It's not taken effect yet, but it will. It will. It's it's sitting there. It's waiting for its time, it's gonna pounce out of a bush and uh, try and sell me a timeshare. And I've got an affliction and I don't have enough money to to pay. And... Fuck. I can barely pay me fucking living. So... From our expedition, uh, which once completed cannot be re-examined, so in, for that it is, it is important that you, when you finish it, that you uh, appreciate what you get because that's your fucking lot. In this case, we received an Iron Spintria. Uh, now, Spintria couldn't be, can be sold. Um, at the auction house, but they can also be used as payment for certain occult services. They're rarely needed, but when they are needed, they are absolutely invaluable and irrepla ir irreplaceable for that purpose. So selling one is always a gamble. We have um, uh, found the account of Kanishk at the spider's door. And the spider door is one of the doors of the manses. And it's written in Aramaic, of course it is. So we can't read that. And no ordinary chemist could produce these dark gleaming crystals, not without the touch of the forge. Aspect forge, aspect pigment, ingredient, and of course auctionable. So there is a chance that we may use these. No. No. Can we study them? No, we can't. Can we do anything to them? No. Um, however, if we were a painter, which I'm starting to think we should become... Then we could... Ah, despair. Oh no, it appears that uh, the curse has come to eat my reason. That's bad. Everything seems to be going quite horribly, quite horribly wrong. Oh no. I've I've become decrepit. And despair overwhelms me. So unless I can somehow stave off despair in the next 
to zero, I have been overcome by despair. No more. Despair, the wolf that devours thought. Am I alive or am I dead? Not really matters. Allowed the despair token to reach three, three dread or injury. Now, based on that, we have a new set of legacies. We've got the Aspirant, we've got the Physician, and we've got the Bright Young Thing. Now, of course, again, different... The, these all allow for different paths, and I have a an inkling that certain paths are better than others, or like certain starts are better than others for certain paths. However, still, um, it... it gives you more reason to, to replay and to, to discover because all of them have a uh, a very different set of challenges. For example, Bright Young Thing, you will probably not have to worry about money. Same with the, the Physician because you've got a position so you can just keep working. The only thing is then you'll have to build a stockpile of money in order to be able to survive not working for a while while you try and build your passion your goal and of course the aspirant I think has probably the most challenges because it is the emptiest of the slates however interesting game easy to learn hard to master as many games of this sort should be um, when it comes to the price normal price 20 euros or your regional equivalent I'm gonna guess about $20 or 16 quid and that's a little bit much it's a little steep for what the game has to offer so even though this playthrough didn't go well the thing is this playthrough didn't go terribly well it actually went rather badly and it still gave enough footage for about you know 40 47 to 50 minutes of video So, on one hand, there's quite a lot to do, but there's not that much to do. So, I would recommend the game, but I would say you should maybe get it on sale. I think it's a very good game, and if you are into the kind of management-y, um, occult kind of, you know, if the theme hits you and the gameplay hits you, then, you know, of course you should buy it. It's fucking obvious, isn't it? It's like telling someone if you like bananas, you should fucking have a banana. Oh my god, that is the most retarded thing that I've thought of today. If So, yeah, if you like it, you like it. Still, get it on sale or something. Ta-ra.